Okay, we come next to John, uh, number one. Uh, let me just uh, get up here on my uh, computer screen. In John chapter 19, verse 30, that's where Jesus passes away. Uh, number two, the soldiers were going to break Jesus' legs so he would die before the Sabbath, but found that he was already dead. They made sure of this by piercing his side with a spear. And uh, John says, blood and water flowed out of the, of the wound. Then three, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus bury the body of Jesus in the garden tomb with Pilate's permission. Four, Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb early on Sunday morning and finds the stone rolled away from the tomb's entrance. Then five, the body of Jesus isn't there, so she goes and gets Peter and John, who come to check it out. John believes that Christ rose from the dead when he sees the empty tomb and the grave clothes and, and so on. When Mary comes back to the tomb, and this is apparently uh, she's returning as Peter and John come to check out what she was saying, she finds two angels on the tomb. Six, then she sees Jesus but does not recognize him at first. She mistakes him for the gardener but then realizes that it is uh, him. Jesus tells her at this point not to touch him for he's not yet uh, ascended to his uh, father. Then uh, the seventh and next to the last point of summary, Jesus appears to his disciples in the upper room but Thomas isn't there. When he, Thomas, returns, he does not believe the disciples' testimony about Jesus. About a week later, though, Jesus comes back to the upper room while Thomas is there. And now, at long last, Thomas, doubting Thomas, believes uh, as well. Finally, the last uh, point of summary is uh, eight. After this, Jesus appears a third time to his disciples. They do not realize it is him until he tells them to cast their fishing net on the other side of their boat. And you recall this is what happened when Jesus apparently first met the disciples at an earlier occasion. Uh, he told Peter and the others to, to cast the net on the other side. And Peter didn't think that would help, uh, but he humored Jesus and they caught a lot of, of fish. So this is a, a repeat uh, performance of that uh, miracle, the, the second occurrence of that. And because that's what Jesus did when they first met, uh, they recognize him. Um, at least that contributes to them recognizing that yes, this person uh, that they don't recognize at first is in fact uh, the risen Lord. All right, so they recognize him as being Jesus, then they come to land uh, where Jesus is and eat with him. Finally, Jesus talks to Peter about feeding the sheep. So that's a, a brief summary of the uh, end of John's Gospel. Matthew, Mark, and Luke don't say that Nicodemus was not with Joseph when Jesus was being buried. Moreover, Joseph's tomb could have been the same tomb as the one in the garden. I see no reason why this couldn't be the case. Most of the other stuff in John is not denied in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, or is affirmed by Matthew, Mark, and Luke, as the case may be. Uh, so for the most part, uh, John is definitely consistent with the Synoptic Gospels. But points five and six are the most troubling and peculiar to my way of thinking. We expect John to be the most different of the four Gospels, for John's Gospel alone is not synoptical. The three synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, are by definition going to be quite similar to each other. Uh, that's what synoptical means. Uh, but John is by definition uh, not part of the uh, synoptical account, so uh, that will be um, more different uh, because it's not similar enough to be considered a uh, synoptical gospel. All right, uh, so uh, synoptical gospels are similar uh, to each other by definition. 
but uh, if we could find a legitimate contradiction, an undeniable contradiction in John uh, when compared to Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that would be another matter. Are points 5 and 6 in contradiction? Uh, and again, points 5 and 6 are the timing of when Mary Magdalene arrives and she leaves uh, the tomb, not really knowing what's going on, gets Peter and John, they come back, and then at that point she sees the angels. Uh, so that seems to be um, out of line with the synoptical tradition. Is this a contradiction? Well, it sounds like what John is saying, again, is that Mary Magdalene went to the tomb prior to going with the other women, then saw Jesus before going to see the disciples. And this conflicts with the Synoptic Gospels, it seems. Here, then, is what may possibly have happened. While none of the evangelists clearly spell it out, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb before the other women. They did not all go together at the same time, in other words. She found Jesus there. It was the other women who found Jesus only on their way to the disciples in the upper room. And Mary also went to talk to Peter only once, who then came to the tomb, and John happened to come along uh, with Peter. So Peter didn't come to the tomb to see the resurrected Christ, as Luke seems to say. Rather, he went to find out what happened to the body of Jesus. Then, after Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John all left, all three of them left, then, uh, only then, did the other women arrive on uh, Easter Sunday morning. Then, when the other women came to the upper room, after talking with the angel, at the tomb, Peter and John weren't back yet uh, for some reason or other. So the, the woman came after Mary Magdalene, talked to the angel, the angel said go tell the disciples in the upper room. They go and talk to the disciples, but not Peter and not John. Now, Mary Magdalene loved Jesus more than the other women. I presume that that is the case because there is an account in the Gospels where Mary comes to Jesus and she's crying. Uh, she, wipe his, she wipes his feet with her tears to clean them. Uh, she uses her hair to clean his feet with her tears. And uh, people take Jesus to task uh, for this uncomely behavior on the part of Mary, but Jesus says, no, you've got it wrong. It's appropriate for her to do this because she has been forgiven more, uh, so therefore she will love more. And uh, so that's why I say that she loved Jesus more than the other women. So when Jesus told her not to touch him, it could be that she, that she was too attached to him, too emotionally attached, and wouldn't let him go. But he knew that she needed to let him go when it came time for him to ascend uh, in Bethany to the right hand of the Father, the time of the Ascension. In other words, it was not an aspect of Jesus' glorified body that meant he absolutely could not be touched. Uh, so when we read in Matthew that the other women touched him, uh, they were able to do that, presumably, because they were less emotionally attached. Uh, so that is a way, uh, one possible way to uh, harmonize uh, John with these Synoptic Gospels. And we'll conclude uh, this series on the Easter challenge uh, very briefly in the final and next video. Thank you.